We are now going to go to the second part of Lecture 2. We're going to talk about Archimedes, Pi, and Exhaustion. The title of this talk is Here is How You Find Pi, the Exhaustion Principle. Archimedes was arguably one of the greatest mathematicians and philosophers from the ancient Greeks. One of the problems that he tackled during that time was how to estimate the value of pi. He didn't have a calculator that he could just plug it into. So the first thing we need to do is to recall the definition of pi. And I ask students this, and they often have a lot of trouble remembering that it is simply the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of a circle. The strategy that we're going to use is we're going to inscribe and circumscribe two n-sided regular polygons around the circle. We're going to compute the circumference or the really the perimeter for each n gone, and then take the limit as n goes to infinity. While this seems like it's a incredibly monstrous task, what Archimedes found was that he could find a relation, a recurrence, between the result for the n gone and that for the 2n gone. So if he had the n gone, he could immediately get the result for the 2n gone, and then he could just keep proceeding to get the 4n gone, the 8n gone, and so on and go as close to infinity as he could manage to continue doing the calculations. So here is a picture of the way in which this exhaustion principle idea works. We have a unit radius circle in black. The perimeter or circumference of that is equal to 2 pi. We have an inscribed hexagon in green. That is our n-gon. And we need to compute the perimeter of that n-gon. We have a circumscribed hexagon in red. That is also an n-gon, and we need to also compute its perimeter. And the value of 2 pi should lie in between those two perimeter values. We then use the Archimedes recursion relation to determine the perimeter of the inscribed and circumscribed two n-gons which bound to pi even more tightly, and then we continue. And we keep doing this until we have gotten the value for pi as accurately as is desired, however many digits it is that we want to determine. Now these calculations are quite tedious, and they're best done on a computer. And actually, the way in which pi is calculated out to millions, if not billions, of digits is not by using this Archimedes exhaustion principle. There are other techniques that are used for it. But in principle, this method will work. It's just you would need to use very high precision arithmetic to get a very large number of digits with this way of doing the calculation. So what we have drawn for you here in the circle is the inscribed n-gon, one edge of it in green, and the inscribed 2n-gon, two edges of it in red. And we have the circle, and the points C, D, B, and A are on the perimeter of the circle. They're on the circle itself. So we're going to work with that inscribed regular n-gon here. The problem for the circumscribed one is assigned as a homework problem for you, and that's something that you're going to be getting to a little bit later uh, in the class. Our goal is to relate the perimeter of the n-gon to that of the 2n-gon, and the way in which we do that is we have to relate the length of the edge of the n-gon, which is Sn, to the length of the edge of the 2n-gon, which is s2n. If we have that, we can get the respective perimeters, and then we can relate those to the calculation of 2 pi. So our first step are to draw lines from a to c and from a to d. d is a point that lies on the bisector of the angle bac, and that occurs because the lengths and the angles of the 2n-gon are set up in such a way that point D will lie on that bisector. The angles ACB and ADB are both right angles due to a theorem that you're also going to prove on the homework. We've mentioned this theorem once before. Because the red line from A to D bisects the angle BAC, that tells us that each of those angles in those smaller triangles is equal to theta. Now, we're going to introduce the point P, which lies on the intersection between the red and the green lines. And now we're going to take a look at some of these other angles. We can work out the angle for the triangle 
ABC, that angle ABC is equal to 90 degrees minus 2 theta because it's a right triangle with an acute angle that's equal to 2 theta. And the angle ABD is equal to 90 degrees minus theta because that is a right triangle with an acute angle of theta. What this means is the angle DBP is also equal to theta, and that's going to become very important in just a second. So what we find is there are three triangles, A, C, P, A, D, B, and B, P, D, that are all right triangles with an acute angle theta, so they're all similar triangles. So our next step is to extract those three triangles from this picture to look at them more carefully. So here's the first, here's the second, and here comes the third. Now we need to add labels to those triangles, and there are the labels being added. All right, so we have the following equivalences because these are similar triangles. And once again, they're similar triangles because they are right triangles that have the same acute angle, which means all three angles of the triangles are the same. And similar triangles have the ratios of their sides the same for the different triangles. Each one is like a blown-up scale of the other one. What that means is, relatively speaking, the sides AC, AD, and BD, which are all legs of the similar triangles, will be proportional to one another. The sides AP... A, B, and B, P, which are hypotenuses, will all be proportional to each other. And the sides C, P, B, D, and D, P, which are the other leg of the right triangles, will also all be proportional to one another. Now, an important thing to note is the side B, D is actually the edge of the 2N gon, and twice the side C, P, because if I take C, P plus P, B, I get C, B. And that is the length of the edge of the n-gon, which we're going to call Sn. All right, so now we're going to compute some ratios. The Greeks were all about ratios. And let's look carefully at what, they, what these are. So the first ratio is going to be AB to AD. That's the ratio of the hypotenuse of the lower triangle to one of its legs. And that ratio should be exactly the same as the ratio of the hypotenuse in the small triangle, BP, to its corresponding edge BD. Similarly, we look at the ratio of AC to CP, that's the ratio of the two legs of the upper triangle, and that will be related to AD divided by BD, which is the rate ratio of those two similar legs for the lower triangle. Now we're going to take that second relation and we're going to interchange, we're going to cross multiply to interchange and move the AD from a numerator to a denominator and move the CP from a denominator to a numerator. And we now get the ratio of AC to AD is equal to CP over BD. Okay, that manipulation was pretty straightforward. Now we're going to take the first relation and the third relation and add them together. Because they both have common denominators, I can easily add them together. I get AB plus AC over AD is equal to BP plus PC over BD. But now let's look at our triangles on the top. BP plus PC, I've already mentioned this before, that's equal to BC. That's the size of the SN. So that second term is equal to BC over BD. Okay, now we're going to do the same cross exchange of numerator and denominator with the first and last terms. So we can rearrange that into AB plus AC over BC equals AD over BD. And then we're going to square that relationship. So we get AB squared plus 2AB AC plus AC squared over BC squared equals AD squared over BD squared. All right, now we're going to add 1 to each side. So it is just long, it's just simple arithmetic. The first term is AB squared plus 2AB times AC plus AC squared plus BC squared divided by BC squared. And that's going to equal AD squared plus BD squared divided by BD squared. Now we have to go back and look at our Pythagorean theorem. Look at the triangle ABC in the upper panel. You can immediately see the hypotenuse AB squared is equal to AC squared plus BC squared. 
So I can replace AC squared plus BC squared in the numerator by AB squared for the first term. Notice as well that AB squared is equal to AD squared plus BD squared. That comes from the lower triangle. And so that means I'm going to be able to replace the, denom uh, the numerator of the second term by AB squared. So when I make both of those substitutions, I end up with the following equation, which actually is a little bit simpler than the one that I had before. AB squared plus 2AB plus AC plus AB squared over BC squared is equal to AB squared over BD squared. Now I can simplify the first term. I actually have two AB squareds, and you can see that I can actually factor out a factor of 2AB, leaving behind an AB plus AC divided by BC squared. And the right-hand side just stays the same. We don't do anything with that. But now we recall AB is the diameter. And it was a radius 1 circle. So AB is equal to 2. So 2AB is just equal to 4. And AB squared on the right-hand side also just equal to 4. So I can cancel those two factors of 4 out. And I'm left with AB plus AC divided by BC squared is equal to 1 divided by BD squared. Okay, we're almost there. We have to use the fact that AC squared is equal to AB squared minus BC squared. That's going back to that triangle on the top, the ABC triangle, using the Pythagorean theorem, but now solving for the green leg, the upper green leg of the ABC triangle. And recalling that AB is equal to 2, so that squared is equal to 4, and recalling that BC is equal to SN, that becomes SN squared, we get now an equation for AC in terms of SN. Similarly, we know that BC is equal to SN, and BD is equal to S2N. So we actually have everything that we need that we can substitute into this expression. And what we get is 2 plus the square root of 4 minus SN squared divided by SN squared is equal to 1 divided by SN squared. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross-exchange the denominator and the numerator, I'm going to bring the S2n squared in the numerator, and so I'm going to simplify that by solving for the S2n squared, and I'm going to bring the other term into the denominator to give it to get this formula, S2n squared equals Sn squared over 2 plus the square root of 4 minus Sn squared. So this now is the Archimedes recursion. It allows me to determine S2n from Sn. So the idea is that we start from the hexagon where we can actually calculate both of the perimeters, and then we use this relation to go to a 12-gon, 24-gon, and so forth. And as I said, it's easier to do such a calculation with a computer. And what I've done for you here is I've run this through for the first five or six iterations, and then I've shown you what it is after a large number of iterations. The middle column is the actual value of pi. The column on the left is the perimeter of the inscribed n-gon. The fourth column, the one just to the right of pi, is the perimeter of the circumscribed n-gon. And the last column is the error width. It's the difference between the circumscribed and the inscribed perimeters. And you can see as you go through this, you get closer and closer to pi by the time we get to the last row here, which is a 24,576 gone, we find that we're already getting pi accurate to almost eight digits. Seven digits of accuracy already for pi by looking at these two different values that come up. And so using a computer, you can very accurately, uh, very rapidly get accurate values for pi.